1977, Gene McGuire's life as a free man ended. He was one of three persons involved in the late night robbery of a bar. One of the men stabbed and killed the bar owner and Gene was sentenced to life in prison without parole. But something happened that transformed Gene's life forever. And that's where the story picks up today. Hello, Gene. Welcome to The Harvest Show. Well, thank you, Valerie. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you. Okay, the fact that you're here with me and not in prison means something happened. You had an encounter with Jesus Christ, and that got the ball to rolling, and uh, now you are out. Tell us about it. Well, I was uh, sentenced as a juvenile in 1977 to life without parole for a homicide that my cousin uh, committed during a out shooting some pool and uh, drinking. Uh, there was another st older stepbrother, and uh, again, uh, against permission of my parents, who said not to go out, I went out, and, and uh, during that time, my cousin decided he wanted to rob the place, and, and I knew I wasn't going to rob the place, but I was, it was my cousin, it was my big cousin, and, and I went along with it, and he, uh, in, the, in the process, murdered the owner, and, and which I followed him and went to New York City, turned myself in. A day and a half later, and I was arrested and charged in Pennsylvania for homicide and conspiracy. I was, was placed at a juvenile center pending uh, hearing. My cousin, he turned himself in approximately uh, 10 days later and uh, was arrested. And basically, he, he said he was the one who did it and that uh, he led me along. Um, I had an attorney within the first nine days of my arrest, the public defender, who uh, basically counseled me into pleading guilty to a homicide charge, which landed me a life sentence without parole. Okay, so you, you did that. How much time did you actually serve? I spent 34 years, nine months, 15 days on a sentence that I thought would have been 10 years. I would have been out in 10 years by his counsel. And thus I pled guilty to that charge, hoping that I would 10 years. And uh, of course, that didn't happen. But 10 years into my sentence, I, um, I attended a weekend revival that was going on at the prison called Prison Invasion Six. It was a national uh, prison invasion and uh, throughout the United States. And I was uh, invited to go to this chapel program that it was a three-day program. And it was at that uh, third day at the program that I um, heard the message, Jesus Christ died and he rose again. And in him, there's eternal life. And I heard the pastor say, real men make commitments. And when I heard that, I, I just knew I needed to. I was 26 and a half years old, and I had nine and a half years served in a life sentence. And, and when I heard that message, it stirred me that uh, if Jesus did that for me, that I could live for him. And you say in your new project, Unshackled from Ruin to Redemption, that God can do the same thing for other people. Now, for those who may not have a dramatic life story like yours, what's the takeaway? What are you saying to readers? Well, I know that there's freedom in the person of Jesus Christ because God is about relationships and uh, over uh -huh. projects. And I, something I learned while I was incarcerated that uh, my relationship with God and my relationship with other people are more important than projects. And, and in that relationship with Christ, there's a freedom to make good, healthy decisions, holy decisions, uh, based upon the Word, based upon the Bible, uh, which I, you know, I, I hold to very, uh, uh, with a lot of conviction. It is a, is it a path, so a light and a path unto my way. And, and so I, uh, I just encourage people to, um, it, develop a relationship with Jesus, which literally frees you from uh, sin, addictions, attitudes that are bad, and any other um, behavior that is destructive to yourself and to others. And by that, um, there's the freedom no matter where you're at. That's not a matter of demographics. It's a matter about a relationship with Christ. Well, I'm sure our viewers and listeners want to know what led to your release. What led to my release was in May of 2010, there was a new Supreme Court ruling, uh, Graham versus Florida, and it based, uh, it's, it was the new law based on um, um, ca brain capacity for juveniles, saying that juveniles do not have the capacity and do not have the ability to think consequently. And so the decisions, um, when we, we, we say, what were you thinking, juveniles, basically, I don't know. Well, that's, that's basically an MRI and medical science 
now that brains uh, don't develop until like in the 25. Uh, so that was an issue for the, the courts to decide and it allowed us who were sentenced to life without parole, who did not kill, who did not know that uh, a murder was going to happen and did not believe that um, were allowed to go back in court and have their sentence adjusted to, to receive a parolable sentence in which I was one of 479 juvenile sentence lifers in Pennsylvania. What do you say to people who feel that they're trapped in unbelievable circumstances in life in general and they just feel like they, there's no way out? Yeah, I think I can relate a little bit to that. And what helped me was I, I really did. I just, I looked uh, and I just said, Lord, help me. And it was basically those words, Lord, help me um, through this situation. And uh, because I had a relationship, because I had... Uh, been reading the Bible, I had some uh, some evidence and I had some direction to go to. But there's been times where, um, you know, I, I had some long dark nights and some hard mornings, and I would I would literally look up look up and say, Lord, help me, and uh, I need grace for this situation. And I encourage even the young people that I'm around today and I speak to is that uh, there's no situation too hard for the Lord that if you would just call upon him and ask him, he'll lead you and guide you and supply for you. You just mentioned speaking to young people. What's going on with your life today? Do you have a ministry? I do. Uh, I, I spent a lot of time mentoring uh, young men and older men too, uh, just sharing my personal experiences that I've gone through. I also work as a corporate pastor for a uh, large family-owned Christian business with about 1,400 employees and we have 900 youth working for us, and I spend my day around them and just speaking into their life, trying to be an example and being a, a, a resource for them. You know, I always tell them, you know, you can you can ask me questions, but to point the hard ones to the Lord. And uh, but it's been really receptive. The reception has been really well. And uh, here in Dallas, Texas, uh, I love it, and and I just get to invest in people throughout the week. Gene, when a person reads Unshackled, From Ruin to Redemption, what do you want them to walk away with? Well, I want them to know, uh, first and foremost, you can have a relationship with the Lord. Absolutely. It's, it's as simple as saying, Jesus, I want to know you and I want, I, want to, I want to have a relationship with you. The other thing is I, I've noticed, um, and, I, and I probably didn't expect it uh, at, in my writing of this book. I was very vulnerable with my life, and I thought being vulnerable is the most effective uh, means of, of, of touching people. When you're most vulnerable, you're most effective. And so one of the things I've really heard a lot about is people that are trapped in bitterness and anger, whether it's a failed marriage or a failedness or somebody hurt them. And the book is um, giving them tools to know that they can forgive those uh, that hurt them and can walk in freedom. Amen to that. Thank you so much, Gene, for joining us and sharing your story with us. Well, thank you, Valerie. It's been a real pleasure to be with you. To connect with Gene, go to genemaguire.org or go to harvest-tv.com for a link to his new project. It's called Unshackled, From Ruin to Redemption. Harvest continues in just a moment.